Hey guys, this is Demian from the Songs of the Ants development team, and I'm making this video today to show everybody a particular geologic feature that appears in the Songs of the Ants world, as well as in the real world as well. And so this particular video is going to kind of be, I guess, part um, geology lesson, uh, part tutorial, and part history lesson too, because I'm also going to talk about how um, these types of formations influenced civilizations in history and how they will influence civilizations in Songs of the Aeons. And so that particular feature I'm talking about is Andean-style orogenic events. And what I mean by that is <clears throat> mountain-forming events that result from an ocean plate subducting underneath uh, a land plate and creating a mountain range on the land side. And I like this particular world because it bears, in many ways, an interesting resemblance to what we see on planet Earth. Um, if we pop over to Google Earth, we will see we have two ocean plates, the Nazca and the Coco, and both of them uh, have their uh, have a divergent boundary over on the Pacific. And what's happening is the plate is being pushed in this particular direction. Uh, as new seafloor is created. And so new seafloor is being created this way and this way. And as the plate is being pushed into land, the heavier uh, mafic crust of the ocean plate is slamming into the lighter crust of the continent and it's subducting underneath the continent and then pushing up the landscape and creating mountains. And as you see here, these little dudes are volcanoes. So lots of volcanic activity as well. Same thing is happening up here um, in the Cocoa Plate along uh, Central America. You can see a similar phenomenon of mountains being raised and then uh, volcanic activity as well. When we bounce back to Songs of the Aeons, we can see we also have two plates. This one is a bit faster than the one down here. And so I think it's, um, actually, let me see what the speed is. Um, it's it's uh, 97, so it's about as fast as it can get. And so we have a really violent, really violent event here, which accounts for why the, uh, the mountain is like as tall as Everest here. Um, and then this slightly slower plate is still producing a pretty impressive mountain, uh, but just not as big. And so just like the Andes, we have mountains forming along the plate boundary and then volcanoes forming as well. You can kind of, you can kind of see where the volcanoes are. Yeah, so you can see we have volcanoes scattered throughout here. And um, on the ocean side, you have uh, a trench, right? And this, the trench is basically where uh, the ocean plate is subducting underneath the land plate. And so these trenches get super crazy deep really quickly. Uh, yeah, so it's about 6,300 meters underneath the seafloor. So. What are some of the interesting features about um, these Andean formations beyond just what you can see here? Well, it turns out in the real world and in Songs of the Ands, not all mountains are created equal, not even, <laughs> not even a little bit. Andean mountains tend to be among uh, the most mineral rich and basaltic rich of any of the mountains uh, because of the intensity of the, of the geologic activity and how much igneous rock and magma come up from uh, from beneath the surface. And so if we look at our rock mode, our rock map mode here, it shows us all of the bedrock of a particular area. And the bedrock uh, map mode, all this data is produced based on the type of um, the type of plate boundary you have, whether it's geologically dormant, whether there's been fluvial and water activity in the past, things like that. And um, you can see here that this red is all like granite, what we call acid platonics. And it's not terribly fertile. Uh, granites, they don't erode very easily. Uh, they tend to weather down into sand, which is, is doesn't make terribly good soil. Um, but mixed inside of all of that granite, we have these pockets of, uh, of igneous rocks, uh, which we call uh, like mixed platonics and basic platonics. They create a lot of, of uh, basically of soils, and they erode down to create really mineral-rich material, which plants really, really love. And if you compare 
the Andean formation to older formations of old mountains, and you go out into the Craton of the continent, you see you have none of that igneous rock, none of that volcanics. And so this area would create very uh, unfertile, unimpressive soils, whereas anything that's eroding off of this mountain will produce great soils. You can see too, these are all of the volcanic areas, the pinks and the light purples. And of course, volcanic soils are famously, famously fertile. And so we have a lot of volcanic activity here too. Uh, this is all just sedimentary rock near the coast, sandstone, limestone, siltstone, mudstone. Uh, and if we take a look at the map, if you have a relatively flat area with this really nice igneous rock or volcanic rock, you can get some decent fertile soils as a result, but also uh, you can also get good soils downstream based on whether there is any erosion off of a particular rock type that's fertile. And so you can see we have, you know, these various rivers um, which can pull from a lot of the fertile rock types. And so let's look at, actually, let's look at this river valley right here. This looks like this could be promising. Uh, right, you can see that you have, uh, you have a lot of water flowing and uh, tribu tributaries uh, contributing to this particular river. And here's the floodplain of that particular river. So anything that's being eroded upstream will end up being deposited along these floodplains. And so if you have a lot of really mineral rich material being eroded off of the mountain on those little pockets of igneous rock or volcanic rock, it'll end up being deposited in the floodplain, which ends up creating really fertile farmland. Uh, and you can get upwards of 10 to 20 times the yield of, of what you would get elsewhere. So let's look at the rock map mode to see if any of it's being pulled off the rock type. So yeah, we have these really nice basic volcanic bedrock types, some igneous rocks. And so those tributaries up here will basically be weathering down this really nice mineral rich bedrock, depositing along the river, along this limestone and, uh, and siltstone. And so this area would be able to support a really, really high uh, population uh, of people because you'd be getting crazy amounts of, of uh, agricultural yield due to the mineral richness of the soil. You can actually see that historically in other areas that, um, you know, that have coastal mountains with, um, with either volcanic activity or igneous rock. Uh, so for instance, historic Pontus had um, a band of, uh, of volcanic rock that, that runs along the north coast of Anatolia. And all of the relatively small in, in area agricultural lands uh, near the coast basically inherited all of this really rich material and you were able to support a really big population on the northern coast of Anatolia even though you didn't have a lot of land area this is mostly mountains you know you can't farm up in the mountains but down in these little valleys and and, and near the coast on on small deltas and, and such you had this super rich soil as a result of um of the contributing material of the bedrock upstream you see that too over in Aden there's an igneous pocket over here uh, in the mountains. And so all of this floodplain inherited that, that richness and you historically had a relatively high population re relative to other areas that didn't have that benefit. Of course, the Incas uh, famously, you know, were able to support the civilization up in the mountains due to um, their ability to terrace, terrace the fields and adapt to different types of agricultural areas. But what's often isn't mentioned about the Aztecs is that they had incredible bedrock to work off of. They had tons of igneous rock, tons of volcanics that enriched the soil. And so they were able to farm the deserts um, fed by, by water from, from glaciers or, or rainfall up in the mountains. Um, it was worthwhile to terrace fields up in the mountains because you could get so much yield per acre beyond what you would get in, in most other farming areas. So anyway, not to beleaguer the point, but um, in Songs of the Ants, I guess the point is that a particular area, not all plains, not all river valleys, not all farmable lands are the same, right? In most strategy games, you have like a plains tile and wherever you are in the world a plains tile produces the same amount of food or whatever but in songs of the aeons 
depending on the geography that's produced by tectonic forces, you can have some areas that are radically more fertile uh, than other places and could be a great foundation for civilization. Um, like I said before, if we look over at, over at this area, which is a Creighton, you have a nice river valley here, but um, it's almost all leached out acid platonic, super old. And so the only thing you're getting from erosion from these mountains is mostly just sands and quartz and things like that, which don't really help. And they, you know, they're, they're very uh, super permeable soils too, so not very useful. Um, so yeah, and you, you can see if we actually go south and look at a different type, type of origin. All right, so here's an, a Himalayan style collision. We actually have very different rock types. I'll have another video about the Himalayan collisions later. You can see we're, we have tons of marble, uh, which I'll get into in a later video. And you have a little bit of um, igneous rock and a little bit of, of volcanics, but most of the volcanics are older and they're not as fertile. But anyway, you can see too, one of the interesting things about Andean collisions is um, is you tend to have these super fertile pockets, but they're all geographically separated from one another. And each pocket can, can have different qualities. So one pocket might, for instance, have a wider floodplain, but may not be drawing from as much rich mineral resources. You can see there was another pocket over here, which um, you see it's, you have this little bay area and you have a whole bunch of um, you have a whole bunch of uh, river river valleys all kind of meeting here. I think this is actually oh, this is actually a coral reef here. That's interesting. Um, so this is probably all tropical in here. Not sure what the rock type is. Let's see. Right. So this is actually this whole area is actually drawing from from some nice platonics. Some igneous rock should make this whole area relatively fertile along the rivers. There's actually volcano volcanoes all through here, so they could be farming the slopes theoretically but you can see how you could have different city-states existing in each of these little valleys and you can see how later on you know we'll effectively be drawing provinces you know to conform to the to the geography of the area right because it, it'll take a long time to travel over mountains not necessarily a lot a long time to travel by boat but you should be able to end up with kind of what you see in in, in historic Pontus with a whole bunch of cities in little river valleys which are able to pr produce a lot of food because they have a lot of good mineral nutrients and you can see how each of these you know each of these has a potential to be a bit different in this case <laughs> i love this this orogeny here because it's just crazy long it reminds me of what we see in um, south america all the way up to north america just one giant mountain chain along the coast formed over history is what we have here is one giant um, continent and it's moving in this direction and you can see how all through here you have the seafloor spreading and it's pushing all the plates upward toward the continents you just have one big origin all the way through here but yeah so that's the general idea with andean formations uh, you effectively get really fertile land but geographically isolated river valleys where you tend to have your civilizations and um, it should produce some very interesting uh, implications for societies and songs of the aeons as well as a, as a player's play style. So that's it for now. I'll have more videos in the future about different types of geologic features and how they influence civilizations and how they influence gameplay. And uh, so stay, stay tuned and we will have more in the future. Thanks.